Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, that's for art. Um, I'm going to read this book. I think I told you about this. There's an introduction that you'll be seeing. I read the uh, index. So, it wasn't the index. What did I read? Sorry about that. Table of Contents. The contents. So, let me get on with this. I'm going to read the About the Author page before we get into it, because it's what motivated me to read this book. This book is dedicated to Malcolm Mall Hancock of Great Falls, Montana, an independent analysis of a different type. About the Author. John William Goffman is Professor Emeritus of Medical Physics at the University of California at Berkeley and lecturer at the Department of Medicine, University of California School of Medicine at San Francisco. He is the author of several books and more than a hundred scientific papers in peer-reviewed journals in the fields of nuclear physical chemistry, coronary heart disease, ultracentrifugal analysis of the serum lipoproteins, the relationship of human chromosomes to cancer, and the biological effects of ionizing radiation with particular reference <clears throat> to cancer induction. <clears throat> Excuse me. A narrative chronology. While a graduate student at Berkeley, Goffman co-discovered protactinium-232 and uranium-232, protactinium-233 and uranium-233 and proved the slow and fast neutron fission ability of uranium-233. That is what made me decide to read this book. Postdoctorally, he continued work related to the atomic bomb prior to operation of plutonium-producing reactors at Hanford. Plutonium was so rare that not even a quarter milligram existed, but a half a milligram was urgently needed for making measurements in the Manhattan Project. At the request of J. Robert Oppenheimer, Goffman and Robert Connick irradiated a ton of uranium nitrate by placing it around, around the Berkeley cyclotron day and night. I have to take my glasses off. I can't quite see that. In 110 Gilman Hall, they scaled up Goffman's previous test tube sized sodium ural acetate process for the plutonium's chemical extraction. Dissolving 10 pound batches of the hot ton in big Pyrex jars and working around the clock with the help of 8 or 10 others, in about 3 weeks they reduced the ton up to a half cc of liquid containing 1.2 milligrams of plutonium, twice as much as expected. After the plutonium work, Goffman completed medical school. Oh, so he was a student, so they used him too. In 1947, he began his research on coronary heart disease, and by developing special flotation ultracentrifugal techniques, demonstrated the existence of low-density lipoproteins, LDLs, and high-density lipoproteins, HDL. His work on their chemistry and health consequences included the first prospective studies demonstrating the high LDL, which is low-density lipoproteins, levels represent a risk factor for coronary heart disease. It says CO56. I have no idea. That's a scientific word and low HDL uh, and low high-density lipoproteins represent a risk factor for coronary heart disease. His principal book on the heart disease research is Coronary Heart Disease, 1959, Charles C. Thomas, publisher. In the early 1960s, the Atomic Energy Commission, the AEC, asked him if he would establish the Biomedical Research Division at the Lawrence Livermore Labor National Laboratory for the purposes of evaluating the health effects of all types of nuclear activities. From 1963 to 65, 
He served as the division's first director and then stepped down in order to have more time for his own laboratory research in cancer, chromosomes, and radiation, as well as his analytical work on the data from the Japanese atomic survivors and other irradi irradiated human populations. His data, basically, that's where he, dis that's where he found out that they have the 90% rule. Back to the book. In 1965, Dr. Ian McKenzie had published an elegant report titled Breast Cancer Following Multiple Fluoroscopies, published in the British Journal of Cancer, issue 19, pages 1 through 8. And in 1968, when Nebo and co-workers had reported on breast cancer after exposure to the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, published in the New Jersey Journal of Medicine, Issue 279, pages 667 through 671. But few were willing to concede that breast cancer could be induced by low LET radiation. Goffman and his colleague, Dr. Arthur Tamplin, qualified the breast cancer risk. That was in 1970 in the journal called The Lancet, Issue 1, page 297 looked at all the other available evidence, and concluded overall the human exposure to ionizing radiation was much more serious than previously recognized. Because of this finding, Goffman and Tamplin spoke out publicly in favor of re-examining two programs which they had previously accepted. One of the AEC's projects uh, one of the AEC's projects called Project Plowshares, a program to use hundreds or thousands of nuclear explosions to liberate natural gas in the Rocky Mountains and to excavate harbors and canals. Experimental shots had already been done in Colorado and Nevada. The second program was the AEC's plan to license about a thousand nuclear power plants as quickly as possible and to build a plutonium economy based on breeder reactors. In 1970, Goffman and Tamplin proposed a five-year moratorium on the licensing of commercial nuclear power plants, summarily ignored. In 1973, Goffman returned to full-time teaching at the University of Berkeley, of, uh, University of California at Berkeley, until choosing an early and active quote retirement unquote. Next page, curriculum vitae. So I'm going to stop there because I'm on my cell phone and I think we might have a uh, limited time here. So